So explain to us what libertarian is. I hear that all the time. Let me tell you what libertarian is. Libertarian is someone who says you can be as liberal or as conservative as you want to be. Just don't force others to be like you. Got it. That's what we are all about. We are all about long-term solutions, not short-term solutions. We're all about changing culture, not just changing law. Law, we have to re remember something. At the end of almost every single law is a guy or a gal with a gun who will put you in a cage. And if you don't want to go in that cage, he or she is going to kill you. That means you only use law when it really matters, not just because I'm angry, not because I don't like you, not because you should do some activity I think you shouldn't do or whatever the case may be. It's only for important things like life and liberty and property and things like that. That's when you use violence. That's when you use force. That's what libertarian is all about. Welcome to Libertarians Drinking Coffee Live. Yes, it is 3 p.m. on the East Coast. And yes, the brand is strong. I've got some coffee again. Got to keep myself up and running as always. You know what I'm going to ask you to do? Please like, comment, share. That does matter. That's how we grow. That's how we get past our media blockade. Our media blackout is by you like, commenting, and sharing. I am very lucky today. I have with me... Today, the man himself ran for Senate in Kentucky. I get that right? The man himself, Brad Barrett. How are you, sir? Oh, great. Thanks for having me on. Always a pleasure. I am glad that you came here today. I know you had a, a grueling campaign with a lot of ups and downs and all kind of stuff happening. And mm -hmm. it was crazy. But let me ask, I guess, the most obvious question. I mean, when you began to start it, you had expectations, right, on what it was going to be. And I guess... I would ask expectations on how you would run it, what would happen, yeah. and also the outcome. Was it close to what you expected when it came well, to running the campaign? Well, it, it was. Uh, the, the COVID situation was was what threw everything into a tizzy. Um, my ground game was something that I think would have shined a lot better, obviously, mm -hmm. under different circumstances. And that sure. was an imperative part of, of making a third party run against a candidate the likes of Mitch McConnell. It was mm -hmm. an incumbent's dream. There's no need to sugarcoat it, you know, um, and it was also a dream. I mean, it was a two party dream because they, you know, the Democrat Amy McGrath raised uh, close to a hundred million dollars in this race. Oh that my God, a hundred million. Yeah, this is just into her Senate campaign account. Now that's not including the dark, you know, the dark money, the outside groups. And McConnell, I, I believe the final figure she spent over 70 and McConnell spent over 50. Wow. You know, just out of the campaign accounts. Um, so that's yeah, a I lot mean, of money. But it was about, I guess, maybe the thing that that surprised me it shouldn't have was just how I don't want to say how wily Mitch is. I obviously knew that. But just how much control he has over everything. Yes. I don't oh. think anyone. You, it's kind of like you can read the books, Larry. But you don't know it until you experience it. And in yeah. areas that you wouldn't expect. You know, I was covered in the New York Times, the L.A. Times. You know, I wasn't covered by my hometown newspaper in my hometown. Right. Hometown. Those right. are the things where he has so he wields so much power. Yes. But in the end, we did the things. If you remember when I was on here before, I said, I'm going to make him say my name. Yep. And they had to. There we go. Yeah. And uh um, but yeah, it, so know, that, that was challenging. Yeah. I, I agree. When I ran in 2018, I didn't realize how much power my governor had, right. Who also was an incumbent, the same thing, yeah. right. The incumbents have yeah. a massive advantage and mm -hmm. most of it is because of the way they can spend the money, right. Yeah. They pull the money over. Go, if you do this, I'll pay. If you don't do this, I won't pay mm -hmm. or that kind of thing. They have a lot of power over that and staying power too. I think it, you're absolutely yeah. right. That is very challenging. Well, that's so, one of the reasons that I changed my stance through the years on term limits. You know, I used to be against term limits, but then when I really studied and, and you know, when Citizens United was passed, mm -hmm. it just gives such an unfair advantage. I mean, you nailed it. The dangling of the carrot. Yes. And so people say, well, voting's term limits. You know, they, they, I had a lot of, you know, people come in with that with some obnoxious comments like, you know, just win. And I'm like, it's not that easy. You know, when, when you're holding people hostage and, and you can dangle the carrot at the right time in front of them, saying it, as a buddy of mine says, it sounds good right. to say it that way. But the facts are, when you're holding the purse strings, 
you've got a certain amount of power. Absolutely. That an yes. Account, that a challenger doesn't possess. Mm. So how much money were you able to raise? I don't know the exact figure. I mean, not a whole lot over the hundred thousand. You know, uh, it kind of a hundred thousand is great. Yeah, 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 not a whole yeah. lot. Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying I'm not saying that in a negative fashion. I'm just saying, and I was easy. I I probably dropped off some in asking for donations after that as well. Uh, you know, uh, it wasn't at the end of the day. We had enough money to do what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. It's just that the governor put us on lockdowns. Sure. I had all these places scheduled to speak, and my opponents aren't weren't really strong in that area. Right. Uh, so right. that was the area that I would have shined over them, and it was limited as to what I could do. But so, then other other things that go ahead. Go ahead. So let me, let me go from that next point, right? Okay. So you raised about hundred thousand dollars. That's amazing. So happy that you did that. That's great. This is what we should be thinking about doing every time. I'm very happy about mm -hmm. that. So now the outcome. Right. You've got about, am I right? Four or five percent. Is that about right? Yeah. Between four and five. I'm, so, they still haven't reported. They're like 97 percent reporting now. So we're probably going to get here somewhere close to 90,000 votes when, okay. you know, when they put the official out and, uh, between four and five, probably closer to four, probably like 4.3, 4.4. 4. Okay. But, but so, what I'd like to have gotten more. Absolutely. But that wasn't my question. No, no. I, yeah, I want to yeah, my, yeah. my question was yeah. when you saw what was happening. Yeah. Right at the end, and I'm and I'm going to go from my own. When I read in yeah. 2018, up until the last day, I really believed I could get five percent. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I was like, you know what? I could break five percent. I believed it. Mm -hmm. Early on, when I first started, I thought, well, maybe I could win this damn thing. Right when I was yeah. a, year, a year and a half out, but my expectations got more realistic as mm -hmm. time went on. Obviously, right? Mm -hmm. the time when I started coming second, then I was like, okay, that's not going to happen. So, yeah. but I believed that until the day before. That I was going to get five percent, and I got two percent. Mm -hmm. What were you thinking the day before when you got four percent? Were you thinking that's about right, four percent? Were you thinking I'll break ten percent? Were you thinking I'll never get even two percent? Where yeah. was you? Your, where was your team's head? Where was your head then? Well, it, it was it was tough to know. I I talked to a house member here about this uh, the day before, and he said he thought I was going to get six to seven percent, and I said four to seven. Um, and the reason that it was hard to know is we had an interesting down the stretch mm. it's very interesting is the outside packs dumped a ton of money into my campaign nice. i don't have the exact figures yet but there's one uh true kentucky patriots that the last i mean i i, I figure i saw was seven hundred fifty thousand, and that was before the election was over with and then there wow. was another one at about 250 one at like 75 so i'd say upwards of two million isn't out of the question whenever the wow. final reporting comes in. But what happened, Larry, was we had the early voting. Right. So a lot of people had already voted. Um, and what it did was it definitely built name recognition for me down the stretch. I have an inbox full of people saying, run for something again and we're voting for you. <laughs> All right. You know, right. Uh, we didn't know we've already voted or it was too, the hour was too late. And right. What McConnell did was he put out they were emailing people, Team Mitch, mm. emailing people. Oh, you know, even if you like Brad, a vote for Brad's a vote for Amy. Of course. But like I tell people, in the end, we, I mean, we broke the total vote record for the state. Nice. By, a wide, by a wide margin. And we made them enter us into the equation. Uh, John Hicks that ran for governor put a post that said, I have to handle it to Brad. He somehow found a way to get the Democrats and the Republicans to promote his campaign, you know, and the, and then spend for it. So, right. you know, that's, that's why I think it's important for us to field candidates in these high profile races. Sure. Uh, I know I'm, I'm with yeah. you. And I, the fact you can raise six figures and then get pack money. Amazing. Yeah. That means we're players. That means mm -hmm. people care about us. We're, we're now finally on the field, mm -hmm. right? We're on the field. Yeah. We haven't won yet, but man, we're finally in the same league and we're, and we're fighting yeah. the same world. I love that. So mm -hmm. let me ask you, what do you think went well, right? As you look back now with hindsight, right? Now you've got hindsight. Yeah. What went well? Well, my social media game went well. Mm. Uh, it was probably the strongest thing of the campaign. Um, I would say definitely that was the, the presence. And also, I tried to spend that money very wisely, mm -hmm. the, the 100000 Um I, I always would tell donors, you know, giving them a dollar, you only have to give me a quarter. Right. right <laughs> you know, to get right. the same result. Right. And 
So I built a page. I have over 30,000 followers on the page. Nice. So doing something else down the road, I wanted to put some of that money towards things that have a residual impact. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Makes total sense. I love yeah. that. So yeah. That well, good. Was there something that, that you think your team could have done better looking yeah, back absolutely. now? Yeah, absolutely. And, and I'll take the, the brunt of the blame for it. Um, I should have had a better boots on the ground yard sign game. Mm. Um, I'm a stubborn man. And it was like, I, I wouldn't accept the early voting. And, and my wife jokes that, you know, just because in your mind, you're not accepting it doesn't mean it's going to go on. And I should have gotten those signs out two, two and a half weeks earlier. That yep. I mean, on myself that, you know, next time uh, I'll have those things distributed. I think that, people sometimes jump the gun with putting too many of them out. Yes, that too. You don't want your campaign to peak too early because you only have so much volunteer energy out there and you don't want that peaking two months before the election day. But I think a solid starting it out 30 days ahead of time and trickling it on up to about three weeks before. But the early voting, you know, that changed everything. It snuck up of on Of course. Us. Yeah, but, yep. but truthfully, and that's the, the thing funny thing is, yeah. you yeah. also mentioned the idea of you know voter uh, volunteer energy mm -hmm. man that's so true right mm -hmm. we have to worry about our volunteers and them getting burned out mm -hmm. yeah right, we do so you, you've got to manage their expectations mm -hmm. you've got to manage their, you're totally right and it's difficult particularly if it's a, if you haven't done a statewide election before yeah yeah now all of a sudden you have to try to kind of figure out how to manage your volunteers oh my mm -hmm. god it's it's a yeah, tough thing uh... to do and a statewide election is a big deal if you're going to do it right. Um, in hindsight, uh, like you and I talked about the other day about the presidential, you know, potential strategy for a presidential election. What I probably would have done, if, another thing that I would have done differently, I would have really concentrated on like two areas of the state and that's it. Um, and yes. I did that somewhat. I mean, that yes. was a failure. I felt my yard sign game was, but I would have really hit like five counties mm -hmm. ridiculously hard. Uh, and then, and it would have worked well because then that pack money came in. Of course, I didn't know they were going to spend that. Some of that yep. hindsight is 2020. Uh, and that would have covered, and it, it was interesting that I had about the same amount of votes. There were a couple counties I got like 6.7, 6.9%. But nice. that three to five range was almost every county. So it shows that they're, it was kind of equally distributed, the amount right. of votes they were able to peel. But if I would have concentrated on five counties crazy hard and then added that to it, I might have got up in the seven to eight percent range. Yeah. But, it, but in the end, the success is that they made me a player in this game. Absolutely. You know, that that's, that's the true success. So while it would have been nicer to get seven to eight percent, getting over two and getting into that four to five range was enough to get their attention. So for, for someone else who just is thinking right now, you know what? I'm thinking I want to run for a statewide election. I'm going to run for a governor or a senator or, mm -hmm. you know, something statewide I want to run for in my state. Maybe not mm -hmm. Kentucky. Maybe they're in Illinois. Maybe they're in Indiana. And they want to run um, statewide. Mm -hmm. is, there, is there a lesson or a, a, something you could tell them now to go, look, you're going to think X. It's not X. Yeah. It's Y. Yeah. Well, I would definitely say getting started early can't be overstated enough. But you have to be careful how you do it. Back to the volunteer situation. Create some enthusiasm when you announce. Do some work, whatever that may be then, uh, whether it's doing a quick fundraiser, you know, to try to get an initial, initial startup with that. And then um, get your yard signs ordered. I think that I'm not a, a big lover of yard signs anyways. It's kind of like buying flowers. You know, I just don't like the efficiency of it all. But I think as, you know, when you're, when you don't have name recognition, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, it exacerbates the need to have that. So I would say I probably underestimated the amount of, of really getting out with that early bump yeah. in that regard and getting some literature handed out, just something tangible like that. Um, I know that doesn't sound extreme, but getting that where you can point back and say, hey, I was out handing out pamphlets a year ago because that's something we're always going to deal with. Because when you become popular towards the end, I'm sure you know this, people say, well, why weren't you out campaigning a year ago? And you say, actually, I was. Right. But right. if you have something tangible like that to say, hey, look over here, you know, this is what I was doing. I would say getting that early jump. I love that. I, I agree completely. Right. Yeah. People mm -hmm. are asking me, Larry, are you going to run for governor again? 
And if I run again, I'm going to announce next year, even though it's not till 2022. Yeah. Because if I run, I need a year and a half to run, yeah. right? For me to run for governor of New York State, it's a year and a half to have yeah. any chance at impact. Yeah. You're yeah. totally right. I have to be able to do that and then cover the state. And I, I, did a, I did a similar thing. I spent a lot of time in smaller counties. Yeah. And, and in certain counties, I got nine, 10% in certain counties. Yeah. And then I got like the Bronx where I got half a percent or something yeah. like that. Right? But that mine, was, yeah, mine yeah. wasn't like yours. Mine was very much different. I mm -hmm. got counties where I got less than a percent or one or two percent and counties where I got eight, nine percent. I was very varied in mine. Yeah. Yeah. Mine was very varied. And yeah. I got certain districts in my state, just, just uh, precincts, where mm -hmm. I got almost 30 percent. Yeah. And that was because I was the only guy who showed up in that district. No one mm -hmm. else did. One, but you're only one man. So you yes. have to do those things earlier, show up earlier, because in a three-month time, you can't do that. No way. I agree. People remember that. Uh, I mean, it really, truly, you know, I'm a glasses half full kind of guy, but I, I'd be lying if I told you that I wasn't disappointed with the in-person, because that's where I would shine. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, McConnell isn't known as a, a guy that goes around and people enjoy his company. And, <laughs> you know, it, it's just not his thing. He's great right. at other things, but being a you know, a charismatic getting out there in the crowd kind of guy isn't it. And really Amy wasn't either. So that's where I would have shined. And the bottom line is this one thing I can tell people hundred percent, you shake their hand, you talk to them, you're likely to get their vote, yeah. you know, yes. and, uh, yep. uh, you know, and, and COVID-19 changed all that. Absolutely. So, you know, but could have been better, could have been worse, but at the end of the day, they knew I was there. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and that was, was the goal. I mean, really, uh, to make but you, sure. But you wanted to show me something. You said the pa PACs put put money into your command and sent mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. Like what? What did they do? They, they, did they send postcards? Did they did they do Facebook ads? What did they, they, did, what did, it the all. they did it all? They did it all. They did it all. They were running commercial ads in the last week during Jeopardy, ABC, CBS primetime ads. And uh, they ran... They spent about, I think it's about 60000 on Facebook ads in about three weeks. Wow. They branded me as the true Kentucky conservative. Wow. The branding they put on. Right. And, uh, yeah, they, uh, well, let me grab one here. I brought a couple of these. Yeah, please. These mailers. And, I mean, they were, playing. this one here is like eight, pa four pages front and back. Wow. You know, like professional artwork on it. I mean, it's nice here. You can see on the inside. I mean, yeah, they, um Ah, wow, that's great. Yeah, yeah. I'm and, jealous. Uh, I want your packs. I yeah, love it. Yeah. And they, um, um, of course, they did one, the Libertarians love, one, don't tread on me. <laughs> of course. Yep. Learned, yeah, they had to do that one. Uh, and then this one was really, really well done as well. Mm. Uh, they, you know, Kentucky or conservative Libertarian for U.S. Senate. And I mean, it was a nice, you know, open up. Wow. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Was, yeah. And see, there was there were different packs. There was the term limits pack that did it early on, and then there was like this one is uh, true Kentucky Patriots. It's the one that I think probably spent the most money. Um, but yeah, they um, that's amazing. Yeah, I mean, there's I mean, you see a Hamlin. This isn't even close yeah. to all of them. I mean, George says he got one. Of, he got one of the mailers. Yeah, what's that? George, he just says I got yeah. one of the mailers. Yeah, yeah, probably twenty of them. Um, <laughs> got to him. Yes, there yeah, we go. Yeah, and and uh, so oh, and, and and you know the TV ads as well. Um, what it did was it was a lot too late, but ah, it branded it. me for another election. Sure, you know, absolutely. Now people know who you are. Absolutely, and yes. they pulled stuff off the website. So I mean, it was done well with the message I was putting forward. So and they asked me about it on the debate. Well, and, they did. and another thing. You know, Mitch didn't debate me. Amy McGrath did, but Mitch didn't. Hmm. Yeah, uh, Mitch wouldn't wouldn't do it. And uh, we debated McGrath on the 26th. And there again, Larry, that's real close to the election. We'd already been two weeks early about early voting. Yeah. So yeah. I tell people the amount of votes that I got times it by three of people that probably maybe would have voted for me. They just felt, oh, I just found out about this guy right just now. And I know other people have been voting and. He doesn't have a chance of winning, but you know, that's why I think if I get out again early, got it, that was something early on, you know, uh, that we'll hit the ground running next time with this name recognition. I have a question from Joe. Uh, he's asking, how do you raise a hundred thousand dollars? 
How did you do that? Can you give anybody who's running locally some tips on yeah. how that happened? Well, um, you have to have a good a good bunch of people around you. As you know, you were one of the people that helped. Yes. Um, it's not easy, and especially as libertarians. I tell people, libertarians, if we're going to win an election, we've got to get in the habit of donating. Okay. It's not, it's a habit. Just like for the Democrats, I got a friend that's a Democrat. And when it comes in, he just, I mean, even it's a 50 bucks, 25 bucks. Someone, his deal is if they send, go through the motions of asking me for something, I'm going to send them something. You know, we have to make that the way it is. And I am, to, I am literally just to make sure I remember this. I am literally a lifetime member of the national LP and I'm a monthly donor. Yeah. I donate monthly. To the yeah, that's right. And that's, and that's what we've got to do. I yep. mean, that's one thing I learned in this is you cannot do it without money. Yep. We, and, and I'm going to, and the other thing I'll say to him is just ask, you'd be surprised. You know, that's something Christy Kendrick always tells people make the ask. Yes. You know, I think libertarians in general, it's a area for us that we don't shine in ask others, others. You know, we've talked about this before. So make the ask. I mean, you're, you're donating your time, your money, you know, yourself, you know, no matter how much you run in a campaign, you spend a lot of your resources yourself, whether Absolutely. it's monetarily or internal resources. It takes a lot to run, and especially a statewide campaign. Oh, yes. You know, I mean, it's just another breed, just another animal. And uh, so I would tell him, and, and doing, you got to create a little bit of urgency behind, I mean, it depends on if, if you're something that's time sensitive. Uh, and it doesn't have to be like me where it's like um, a debate's coming up and we've got to raise this. If you start doing the figures, you know this, you don't need to raise what the other guys raise. Correct. Yes. But if they're That's raising a million, we need to raise 50,000. Yep. So say, hey, my opponent over here has raised a million. I don't need to raise a million, but I need to raise 50,000 Absolutely. by the end of next week. I mean, you've got yep. to make it to where people are like, I mean, it's just human nature. If, if we create a little urgency, I know I'm the same way. If somebody is like, donate, I put it on my list. I need to donate to them. There was a guy I planned to donate to early on. I didn't donate to him until two weeks before the election. Mm -hmm. Had he kept on me and said, Brad, I need that donation you told me you were going to send. I would have, I would have done it. You know? No, I'm, I'm yeah. with you. It yeah. seems though that somebody thinks you're bad at basketball though. Is that true? Josh that, says, you're, no, Josh says they, you're bad at basketball. Yeah, that's, that's, must be team Mitch paid for because they know that, <laughs> attack, you know, Machiavelli and attack them on their strengths. So, <laughs> I like uh, that. Very good. Yeah. That's yeah. Very good. So, no, I, I like this. So let me ask about the top of the ticket and the bottom of the ticket mm -hmm. up and down. Yeah. Did that matter to you at all? Was it good, bad? Was it irrelevant? Did yeah. Did either the bottom or the top have any yeah. Well, I, I, um, Kentucky is an interesting state. Uh, we're a deeply red state. We're a straight ticket state. Oh, right. And that's the, see, there's another thing that a lot of people don't understand about my campaign, that there were people, and my page is full of it, they broke state, broke straight ticket voting to vote for me. Mm -hmm. You know, I was the only one, they're like, we voted for a Republican or Democrat. You're the only one we voted for. You know, I had a ton of that. And um, uh, so, yeah, I mean, as far as the top of the ticket, I ran a different campaign than the top of the ticket ran. Mm -hmm. uh, Kentucky, like I said, is a different state, and sure. I didn't really attach myself. It wasn't for the good or for the bad. It was just I had a specific way I was yep. going at McConnell, and McConnell's message was he's Trump's guy. Got it. That was his message. So I ran it, Mitch, as you pay lip service to being Trump's guy when it suits you. You're for fiscal responsibility when it suits you. Right. You're for, you know, he touts his pro-life stances. He's for being pro-life and not funding Planned Parenthood when it's an election year. Right. You know, that. so I had specific things I was doing. And then as far as McGrath was concerned, my other opponent, I just simply kind of put it out there that she's not right for Kentucky. Sort of similar to, to McConnell and really for Kentucky, Kentucky ways of thinking she's not that candidate. So right. I mean, that's right. kind of how I did it. Yeah. And I really didn't concern so, myself much with the top of the ticket. Now on down ballot, yeah, down ballot. I feel it's the responsibility. And, and, and let me say this, I, you know, if you're running on the presidential ticket, you're doing things for the down ballot candidates. Joe helped me on the fundraiser. You know, I mean, she gave me help anytime I needed it. It's, you know, I'm just, as far as running my campaign goes, yeah. I think it's important that we tailor our campaigns to what yes. we're doing, you know, what, yeah. And, 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 yeah, what down ballot, we had some people get 16, 17, 20. Wow. 
That's yeah, in two-way it. races. But still, it was tough because in rural Kentucky, even the Democrats tote guns around. Sure. You know, so, I mean, it's it's a, you know, there's not a no, lot. No, I, I have the opposite issue. A New York City Republican yeah. is not a Kentucky Republican. Well, it's, it's interesting that right. you mentioned that. Because one of the things I was saying on a post the other day was measuring a candidate's success doesn't really have much to do with total percentage as a third as a libertarian here. There are candidates that got 2.5 percent that I felt overachieved, and there were candidates that got 15 percent that I felt underachieved. Like your situation here, I've always said you're a great candidate in a state that doesn't really appreciate how good you are. You know, Thank I mean, you. I tell people Thank that all you. the time. I'm, I'm, I'm like, you know, uh, up, up in your neck of the woods, like you said, you have the opposite problem that I do. Yeah, you bring me to New York and I wouldn't do well. But, you know, here in Kentucky, it's a totally different story. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. That's exactly right. But I, I think your upside is big up there. If you can ever really tap in and get them thinking the right direction. You know, that's the key. I, I, sure. I think it could be, but I think like a New York mayor's race or a gubernatorial race in New York is just such a different breed of cat. Don't, don't forget something. What, Bloomberg, when he was gov a mayor of New York City, mm -hmm. he was a Republican. Yeah. People don't realize that. Yeah, he's, he's a Republican, Bloomberg. That's a, that's, that's a New York City Republican. Yeah, a New York Bloomberg's, City Republican. Like a Bloomberg. New York City yeah. Republican. Yeah, a guy who talked about him having, what, the third largest army in the wor world, the NYPD, that's your Republican. That's the Republican. <laughs> you know, yeah. It, yeah, the guy, yeah. Who, the, the guy who tried to, to stop. stop us from stop having, yeah. no, the guy who to stop us from having, you know, bigger than 16 um, ounce Cokes. Yeah, 16 ounce Cokes. That's but, a Republican in New York City. That's a Republican in New York City. Yes, yeah, and so. that's something I try to ex explain to people, that there are great candidates that just live in the wrong spot. Yes, there we go. Yes. Yeah, you know, I don't know exactly where I would put you to be to do your best. I don't know. Um, no, I know my state. I love my state. Yeah, I know yeah. my state well. I love my state. I know it very well. I'm in the right mm -hmm. spot. I, I'll just do what I got to do. Yeah, I'm yeah. I was that. being hypothetically speaking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What's, right. what's your future now? Now that you've gone through this, now that mm -hmm. you've been through the fire, What's the future for you? Well, that's the million dollar question that everybody's answering. And I don't know for sure yet. I'm taking things in. I, I'm going to, ha I feel like I need to do something because all this name recognition that's been branded on me here, mm -hmm. you know, we, we need to do something with it. Um, in 2022, the RANS race is, is what is going to be going on here. And in 2023 uh, is the governor's race. And we have, you know, polarized times right now. We have a Democrat governor uh, here, and he's locked, you know, into mass mandates and lockdowns. So you can imagine that the, I mean, he, some people love him for it, some people despise him for it. So it's going to be lively in 2023. So, yeah. I, I've got to ask, I mean, it's already happened to me. Yeah. I'm assuming it's happened to you. Republicans have to be knocking on your door. They are. There yeah, we go. Yes, going. Hey, yeah. why don't yeah. you run for us? Yeah. Why don't you do that? Hey, why don't you be governor for us? Why don't you be whatever mm -hmm. senator for us? Whatever that kind yeah. of. Yeah, and and I don't mind talking about this at all, Larry. I mean, it's it's a fact, and you already knew it before you asked me. And, yep. And some of them are very prominent. You know, the ones that have reached out, and I'm sure that's part of the whining and dining phase. Is mm -hmm. they probably see a branded libertarian over here that could be a pain. Or we can, you know, try to get him over here. And, you know, Kentucky. It's a whole lot easier to get you over to them than to fight you. That's right. That's right. And and the thing of it is that we're an interesting state. You know, we have Thomas Massey and Rand Paul here. Rand yep. Paul and I live in the same uh, county. Uh, we ah. share a close mutual friend. And uh, uh, I actually uh, had uh, met Rand uh, uh, three or four months ago and had breakfast with him. But, uh, um yeah, it's, it's tough because the thing that, to be completely honest, Kentucky, the straight ticket voting, Larry, is just, it's it's a killer. Yep. I mean, if we're being honest, I can blow sunshine all day long. No, no, that's why I ask. And I want people killer. to know this, right? Yeah. And, uh, um, you know, and, and and so I have I have a decision to make here coming up. And, and with the name recognition that they poured on me, uh, People are antsy. They're like, what are you going to do? What are you going to run for next? You know, I get it every day. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, so the decision is going to have to. Can I that. give you my opinion on this? 
Yeah, go ahead. And I give it to anybody who will ask me. If you honestly think you can win as a Republican or Democrat, whoever comes to you first, mm -hmm. you should consider it. Mm -hmm. If it's just so you'll get more votes or have a chance at victory, it is a terrible idea. It's a terrible idea. Yeah. Terrible idea. Mm -hmm. If you can, if you think if I do this, I'll actually win yeah. and I can make change and fix my state or my county or my city. Mm -hmm. All right. That, yeah. You know, I don't like it because I'm a libertarian, but I yeah, get it. I it makes sense. Yeah. It, but it sometimes does. people go, look, you can't run as a libertarian, run as a Republican. You might win. No, odds are you're going to lose as a Republican too. Yeah. And then you're a nobody. Yeah. But if you lose as a libertarian, you still move the needle. You mm -hmm. still make impact. People still follow you. It's a smaller pond, but mm -hmm. the ripple is so much bigger. Yeah. Yeah. That's so true. Just my view. And it's anybody who's listening or watching. If someone's like, hey, you're doing great. The, the Republicans asked me years ago before I was even I mean, in 2017. They said uh, or late to, they said, hey, why don't you want to a lieutenant governor with our Republican? Mm -hmm. And I said, so I can lose. I can lose on my own. Yeah, I'm, you can lose I'm, on your own. Yeah. I got that down. I can yeah. lose on myself. Yeah. So I can lose and become a nobody. Yeah. Or I can run as a libertarian, maybe win. If I win, oh my God, lightning struck. I'm I'm magical if I win the damn thing. Mm -hmm. And if I don't win the thing, I can still make impact and change things. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's always what I'm thinking. When I run, if I run, it's always about can I make the impact? Mm -hmm. Is there a shot to make impact? And if you're just going to run as another Republican, you're not going to make any impact. Well, if one of the things that I've considered running for is ag commissioner here. You know, I'm a regenerative farmer, and I do really think I could win that as a Republican. And an interesting thing is that Mitch McConnell's campaign manager, it's been told to me that that's the job that he's eyeing. So mm -hmm. it could set up an interesting primary showdown. And, you know, one of the interesting things is, I, like I said, I got 80-something thousand votes. 50,000 of them were probably registered Republicans. Mm. So in a primary, you, if you can carry close to that amount of votes in there with you, you've got a good step on one that's probably only going to take 100,000 to win the primary. Um, so, But what I tell libertarians, the same as, as kind of what you're saying here, is that for one thing, if you're in a straight-ticket voting state, that's the toughest of tough. It's hard. Yeah, it really is. And I can sit here and I could walk you through it and show you every, you know, and, and, and I, but running against the majority leader gets you a certain amount of notoriety. Yep. Well, and, and on the debates, I mean, if you looked at the YouTube, I mean, a lot of the Democrats were like, we didn't agree with him on policy, but he won that debate. So if you can pull that to even your opposition, yep. uh, one of the things I think that I could have running as a, if I ran as a Republican here in Kentucky, as I could say, You've got a candidate here, if I ran in the primaries, that the libertarians could be satisfied with, the Democrats are satisfied with because of my regenerative farming, and the Republicans are satisfied with the conservative side. How many candidates do you know that are a candidate that all three parties can live with? And then I'm on a specific thing with ag. And, I, and I'll tell you what, Larry, in these authoritarian polarized times, there's bridges that need to be made here. I mean, we're That's on the right. road to nowhere with this polarization and, and hating everybody, it's the wrong way to be, you know, and uh, there's going to have to be some people that get out there and say, I'm dropping labels. You know, the fact of the matter in this state is it's a deep red Republican dominated state. But on the flip side of this, I just ran against McConnell and McConnell, you know, is the man in the Republican party here. So I, so it's not just as simple for me as saying I'm going over there to that side because who says McConnell is going to allow it? No, he may sabotage you, know? you. absolutely. He yeah, so that's sabotage. the other thing. Yep. So, so, but I look at this, I don't have really any downside here. I've gotten uh, over a million dollars spent to brand me in a good way. If I run as a libertarian, I'll look at like a viable candidate. If I run as a Republican, then they're going to have to either accept me or deny me. So, I mean, it's really, the thing of it is, I'm, I'm I mean, guys like us, we really want to move liberty forward. So we're not in it for the politician end of it. So if we lose, we lose. Like you said, you can lose on your own. Or you, get, you know, so I mean, it's it's really. I didn't not, need the Republican establishment in my yeah. speech to lose. I yeah, yeah. myself. 
But I do. Yeah, that's one of the things that I read not too long ago, and I may have already mentioned this to you, was talking about how these young Republicans aren't burying their heads in the sand on the climate and on the environment. So I think that might be an excellent niche, niche area of saying we don't need a Green New Deal for this. We can get in here and problem solve. I think this is an area that as libertarians we can I like that. that. Yeah, yeah. And so I think on specific things that we need to find areas in policy that we can live with each other. Mm -hmm. You know, all the parties. And I know that's not popular right now. I know it's the us versus them mentality. But um, well, Garrett, yeah. Garrett says uh, he talks about in my race. What about one of us at the top of the governor ticket, but a Republican as lieutenant governor? Is Ronald that what you might do? Maybe you run as a libertarian. But yeah, lieutenant governor. Your lieutenant governor is either a former or current Republican. Is that possible? Yeah, that's you? that's a possibility. Uh, but see, here's the thing. One of the problems in the governor's race here in Kentucky is the the race that brought us Andy Bashir, who, who's the governor now, beat, I don't know if you had heard of Matt Bevin, that used to be yep. our governor. Okay, and it was very close. John Hicks, the libertarian candidate, got 28,000 votes. I remember. He lost by five. One of the biggest hurdles I had to overcome was, we love you, Brad, but you're a spoiler. I mean, these are real things. I mean, the election's over with. I want to tell people the reality. You know, of these No, but, but if you go for governor, as an example. Yeah. yeah. And you have, to Garrett's point, if you have a, if you have a Republican lieutenant governor, yeah, that satisfies the red in the state because you have a, a Republican lieutenant governor. Yeah. If that Republican governor was elected to something before, then they have some status, they have some team, they have some money. Yeah. Now you can say, I'm not spoiling anymore. We got 28,000 last time. Now give us, you know, 2 million yeah. and we'll win this thing. Well, we right? don't, and we'll we win don't it. have nearly the amount of people. You know, our I think we had about two million total votes. I think maybe a little more, two two point two or something like that. But why I, I mean, just to be honest, why I think that won't work Please. is the it's fresh on people's minds. And this is something Andy Bashir is a very polarizing character, and it's just going to simply be there's X amount of votes for Democrats, X amount of votes for Republicans, and people are going to brand you leaning one way or the other, whether you want them to or not. They're going to say, that's Brad Barron. He's way more Republican than he is Democrat, or he's way more Democrat than he is Republican. And, and the electorate's going to brand you that way. And then the, the opposing team that needs, that thinks you're taking the votes from them, they're going to help push that along, you know, is the thing. I think that what we can do as libertarians is, I'm not saying don't run people in those positions, but if we had really good boots on the ground, coordinated down ballot, down ticket yep. races, especially where we can find two way races. I and, agree completely. Uh, yeah. And concentrate our resources on those. And, and if you've got somebody over here, one of the things I've said, we, even though sometimes libertarians are definitely, you know, not tribal or, or team oriented in certain ways, when it's election time, it's team time. Yes, it is. Whether you want it or not, you know, that's the way it is. It reminds me on Lord of the Rings when it says, we got says open wars upon us, whether you'd wage it or not. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, you know, and that brings me to one of the things I want to say that I've, I've heard other people say it, but it needs to be brought up right now, fresh off the elections. I didn't have very many problems of sticking my foot in my mouth or saying something. I was careful going against McConnell. But if your candidate you support or one of their team releases something that doesn't bode well for your campaign, as libertarians, let's not bring the emphasis on it. You know, let's not point that out. No, I it, I say it all the time. Yeah. It's and, not and, required. Yeah. If, if I say something you don't like, it happens all the time. Yeah. Libertarians are terrible that way. They backstab each other like there's no tomorrow. Yeah. If you don't like what I said, there's two other options besides put me That's on right. blast on, on Facebook. You could yeah. either just say nothing. That's mm -hmm. option one. Or two, reach out to me. Yeah. Reach out to my team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, Larry, I saw this thing. I didn't like it. Is that real? Is that what you meant? What would you think? Yeah. That's an option, too. But, but we they don't. they love to put people on blast. On yes. Facebook. And, and it's time. I mean, if we're going to do things, it's past the sugarcoating time. I mean, I had people while I was getting ready to prep to go on the debate stage trolling. And I'm not going to mention what it was about, but we're trolling my page, Libertarians. So I had to call and get one of the team members to watch and delete and hide some stuff while I'm, you know, yep. needing to be concentrating on debating. This is yep. what I'm dealing with, you know, and, uh, uh it's, yeah, it's and what it I tell people all the time. If you're going to run for, for office as libertarian, yeah. you have to remember 
that you are going to be backstabbed by libertarians. Yeah, yeah. Accept yeah. that as true. And yeah. not, don't be shocked when what? Oh, yeah, I'm not crying about it. I'm just yep. saying if we're going to move the needle forward, yeah. this is not the way to do it. Yep. You know, and uh, when I go on the page and I had R's and D's defended me <laughs> against libertarians. Yes, I know. Yeah, you know, they can't get along about anything. And so they're like, why are they treating him? You know, and, and I didn't have much of it. But, you know, the ones, the squeaky wheels, they're loud. Absolutely. never anyone that's donated any time or money to your yep. campaign. Absolutely. You, yes. you know, I mean, you know, so I mean, but I, you know, and, and like I said, I'm a glass half full kind of guy and I'm a big boy. I can take it. But the problem is it hurts us. It does. If it was just taking personal shots at, at me, that's fine. But when we're on there and you're trying to draw people from the other parties and independents, yes. and they see us attacking each other like that at election time, what message does that send? I agree completely. Yeah, yeah. I agree, I look, I agree with you. Yeah, I know you weren't upset, but I wasn't either. I mean, yeah. Yeah, that's when when I lost my election. While of course I felt bad, obviously, but I felt worse for my team. Mm -hmm. The people who, oh, yeah, absolutely, your yeah, who had supported yeah. me, who wanted me to do better, who mm -hmm. wanted me to break ten percent. I mean, who wanted yeah. all those things, right? I felt worse for them. Um, I, I, I knew I had to take this. Like I was emotionally ready to take the punches in the face. I was okay mm -hmm. with it, but I wasn't okay with them taking punches for me. I, I wasn't okay with that. I totally agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and at the end of the day, my campaign was a success. Uh, you always want more, of course, uh, but but. You know, if I would have had a great boots on the ground and then the packs wouldn't have dumped that, it may have leveled out. You know, I mean, we we just have to do better than average and keep moving it forward. And like I said, this was an exposure race. Yeah. Yeah, is what it was. Uh, truthfully, Mitch is a powerful guy. I mean, he, he wields a lot of power for this state. Yeah. I mean, he's not lying when he says my position allows this state to punch above its weight. Yes. So really, it was tough. Even if you don't love Mitch, he's still the the man. Yes. And Kentucky State. So you know, I think that, and and, and the Democrat only wound up Amy with like thirty eight percent. Yep. So and spent seventy million dollars. So it shows you, you know, how tough he is. I mean, Absolutely. you got to give credit to. I call him Machiavelli Mitch. I guess it works. I mean, it it works, and you know, he's he's uh. You know, he, he, he's done it many times. I Absolutely. Mean, I think this was the seventh election he's won. So yeah. let me ask, before we wrap this up, yeah. Brad, is there anything else you want to cover, talk about, ask, anything? Well, uh, bring up. I, I, did, did you mention my Facebook page yet? The, I did, absolutely. Yeah, okay, yeah, Get I, over to Facebook, Brad Barron. It's the Facebook page. Yeah. Go like that page. Go follow his stuff. See what Brad's doing. Keep yeah. them in our party. Don't let the Republicans steal them. <laughs> Don't do it. Yeah. So well, I, I hold do on to him that, so we can keep in our party. Yeah, that's somewhat related to my race, but something you and I have talked about. Strategic planning on these elections. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, and, and I'm willing to help. If anyone wants to call me and ask, I mean, we're not talking that long. They're that long on here. There are specific things that I can say, you know, if they want to ask me, I've, I've done it all in this election as far as running in an election uh you know other than a presidential run you know this was about as much as you can do you know governor senator or the president you know were kind of the three races that absolutely you have, to have an eclectic array of tools in your arsenal you know when yep. you do it um messaging you know all that stuff catered to where you're at and what's going on i mean mm -hmm. we can be we, we want to be principal but we also have to pay attention to the zeitgeist of the time and keep our absolutely on, yeah yes. on what's going on so messaging is key in the, and especially in a time like a pandemic. But I'd like to see things going forward where we maybe get teams together or have mm. discussions on strategy. Yep. How are we going to attack this specific race from the presidential race on down to city council? Okay, what what's going on here? What's the strategy? We don't, I think we're, you mentioned in, in an interview or, or, or I read where you said somewhere, look at our candidates now. You know, don't, I mean, where we're at now with candidates versus where we've been in the past. We have viable candidates. Absolutely. We are way better. It's clear. Mm -hmm. If people think the liberty movement's not working, mm -hmm. they're not paying attention. No, they're not paying attention. We are yeah. absolutely moving forward. Mm -hmm. Of course, I wish we had done better. I always wish we had done better. Mm -hmm. But we're clearly on the up. Mm -hmm. I agree. Us. We're on the and up. That's why I think us getting together and those of us that have ran, 
if anyone has ran an even remotely or reasonably decent statewide campaign, they have something to offer to your campaign. Absolutely. It's just that simple. You know, so reach out to these people. Um, you know, Ricky Dale Harrington. Uh, Amazing. One of the great quotes that I said was something along the lines where he said, uh, if everybody's thinking the same as they're really very much thinking going on. <laughs> you know, and I think that for us, too, we need to brainstorm more. Uh, we need to, you know, have discussions where we're like, OK, let's take a look at Larry's race. Let's take a look at Brad's race and everybody give their input and look at the, you know, specifically what's going on. And then, well, what you were talking about, too, about in the presidential race attacking certain states. Yep. You know, and starting out, what'd you say, with like five states? Yep. Okay. Same way with candidates, I've said. Okay, everybody starts out good, but if we get down the, you know, two, three months out from the election, and we're in a state, we have limited resources as libertarians, and we see over here, this particular race is vulnerable, then we need to shift Yep. You know our resources towards that race. And look at it as a team effort. If I'm shifting them, you know, if you and I were in the same state and you had a better chance and we shift away from Brad to Larry, embrace that. Say, this is a team effort. The reality is we can't, we don't have the resources to do it, resources to do it from top to bottom. So we have to pick you know, our back. I'm with you. You know what I did this year? I, 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 I focused heavily on local candidates. Mm -hmm. Right. Because I knew that's the future for us. That's our farm team. Yeah. Right? I knew that was going to happen. And in the end, there were three that I was talking about constantly. It was you, Harrington and Rainwater. Mm -hmm. I thought those were our three stars this year. Right. That yeah. were making yeah. impact. And I talked only about you guys. I had you on twice. Yeah. I had Harrington on twice. I yeah. raised money for you. I raised money yeah. for Harrington. Right? Because I knew this. This is where our resources have to go. I yeah. raised money for Rainwater. Right. And because that's where our money had to go. I completely agree. Yeah. Yeah. And thanks to everybody. You know, uh, uh, it's a team effort. It really yep. is. That's not cliche. It's the way it is. Yep. And we have to make it, we have to do better. That's the thing. Well, the D is five yards, so I don't care. We, we have to do better than they do. Yes. You know, if we're going to be legit, we have to be more efficient. We have to be able to set stuff to the side. It's just the way it is because they're offering a different package. They're offering supposedly a government that's too involved that takes care of you i mean that's they're, they're selling a different product we're selling a we do better when as a collective of individuals well we're going to have to live right. it we're going to have to show them hey you know yes. we're different but we can get along we can set things to the side um we're going to have to show them absolutely you know, that, that we can do it as libertarians examples and, uh, everything yeah 100 mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. All right. Well, thanks, Brad, for coming. Yeah, thank you, Larry. It's always a pleasure. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate this. Please check ahead over to Facebook. Check out Brad Barron. Keep, keep him in the loop. I will see you all very soon.